having popcorn before you last year. Oh my god, it was popcorn. So cops, 695 and out against Peterborough United. You've scored 97 career goals. You've picked your best five for Rovers. Should we take a look at number five? Yeah, let's go. For the first goal of your hat-trick against Norwich in 2010, why did this goal make it into the top five? At the time, you know, we'd just been, well, a couple of seasons in the championship and I think we had a meeting about me my end product you know I needed to score more goals needed to, to set more goals up I played behind Billy in this game so we played well we trained and I said that I was going to score a hat-trick uh, jokingly and yeah I obviously went out and scored a hat-trick and to be fair that's probably one of my best goals I've scored mm. um, this one not so to score to yeah. score a hat trick in any in any game, hmm. um, to score a hat trick is is an un unbelievable achievement, and to do it in the championship was was special. Mm. Little slice of luck on the third one there. <laughs> that was definitely going in. <laughs> and I went to punch the Tim Cale on the yeah, corner. Yeah. Yeah. Punch the corner bag. Absolutely missed it. <laughs> Number four, your five hundredth Rovers game. I think the boys had got you a cake the night before, hadn't they? So how much did it mean to to top the occasion with a goal like that? Yeah, they got me a cake and then they wore sort of shirts in the warm-up. Um, yeah, there was quite a big deal made of, of the 500th game. I think that with that shirt, I had 500 embroidered into it. Um, so it was, it was, a, it was a, a fantastic occasion and, you know, a great performance. You're dying to get on the score sheet and, you know, the travelling fans, I wanted to give them something to, to shout about and, you know, to get that goal was, was the icing on the cake. We were so good going forward, you know, five goals. Um, I think Harry Middleton actually did really well in this game. I just felt like we we were so confident. We were playing with um, almost that arrogance that mm. that successful teams play with and, and it was an unbelievable to be a part of. And, you know, I think my best return, 10 goals, 15 assists that season and to get that goal um, was, was, was huge for me. To have all the boys lifting you up afterwards, <laughs> John going underneath you there to get you <laughs> on his shoulder, it's some effort. I've got a great picture of that uh, in the house. You know, you, I've never been raised up like that before and, you know, John, unbelievable that season for us and just, just everybody, the, the whole togetherness of the group, you know, you could see that uh, in that game, in that celebration um, and, and that, that's exactly what that season was about. Mm -hmm. We're getting towards the business end now, Cops. This is number three. Your free kick at the keep mo in the gold kit, you're about to enter the field. So what's going through your head as, you, as you're coming on? Well, I've just been given dog's abuse from one of their players for designing the kit and having bright white boots on at the age of 40. Um, so I'm thinking, you know what, I've got five minutes to, to score a goal, uh, make a difference and... Yeah, I'm, I'm. You know, been thinking about it overnight. If we get an opportunity, I just can't wait to to, to score. I genuinely felt like I was going to score. This is it. When the free kick gets given, you can see you there straight away. You and Bozzy, both of you, I think, had the same thought of, of wanting to well, take it. Bozzy just says to me there, "Look, I, I want it, but you can have it if you want it." And I was like, "Come on, Bozzy, I'm, I'm taking this <laughs> surely." Um, I knew where it was going to go. I knew what I was going to do because they've been sort of visualising it. I'm sure Grant McCann obviously would have been thinking the worst. Um, you know, 3-2 down hmm. with me stepping over it. You can hear me and Danny on the commentary. Pressure's both, the pipes. Yeah, both anticipating <laughs> it. It was unbelievable commentary. Did you know where it was going? Yeah, 100%. It actually doesn't look like it could get... It's quite a big wall as well. Mm. <laughs> wow oh. you know as much as I say I knew where it was going you still have to do it <laughs> you know and it's such a good free kick in, mm. like without sort of blowing my own trumpet but and I know you got emotional after that game didn't you in the press conference as you said that those moments are rare in football to have something like that on such a special day it doesn't happen for every player and, yeah. and all that often no I think I think you've got a kit on with everyone everyone's got JC26 on the socks you've got 26 on the shirt 
like you design the kit mm. like there's a bit of pressure there in my opinion and you know I've got five minutes to come on and, and do something in my opinion it would have been an anti-climax if we got beat 3-2 and I'd not, I'd not done anything mm. so for me to come on score the equaliser in the manner it was um, again it's one of them memories that sticks with me and will stick with me because although fans weren't in the stadium you know the amount of people that messaged me after this game telling me what happened and where they were and how it played out for them was was magical for me to do that and to score that goal I mean if you look at it there there's one real realistically there's one spot that you can put it mm. and and there it goes and there it goes <laughs> <laughs> the rest um, is history and, and I got emotional because it finally dawned on me that that could be one of the last you've chosen two as, as joint second both in the same game everybody remembers the free kick to crown the hat-trick but before that there's a really nice individual goal I think they'd gone at this point 3-0 down and you know to hit it with my left like that and to finish was was unbelievable and um, that night was was probably one of the best nights I've ever had as a, as a professional footballer again scoring a hat-trick but in a playoff semi-final with the with that group of players full keep more like flags waving it was just unbelievable and again to to score that not many times I've done that in terms of taking on players and scoring so yeah that one sticks out in my mind when you're on a run like that you can see Sean's reaction there I think he said on the podcast didn't he that that's yeah. what people remember about yeah. that night but to apologise to his family <laughs> for swearing but you, you can hear the commentators talking about how good your individual performance was that night but as it's going on are you thinking wow like everything's going right for me tonight or is it all just you, you think about it afterwards no I, I genuinely think that it doesn't happen very often as a player like I think in, as a player in your mind you want to play like that every single week but that isn't always going to be the case mm. um, they're few and far between and you know that one for me everything just just turned out right you know to, to score them two goals and then to score the final goal um, was a dream come true for me a little bit later on in the South End game and this just tops it all off as the free kick's given a little jink now was you thinking that not far away from being a penalty was it it could have been a penalty um, but again you know like we just said everything that I did I felt like came off and you know, scoring two goals in the manner that I did and then getting that free kick I feel like there was only one person that was going to take it and <laughs> I think yeah. the commentator said they're exactly the same. I wonder who's going to say this one. You and Green, you're having a chat there. Yes, yeah, so he's going, look, tap it to me and I'll stop it. And I'm going, no, I'm just going to hit it. And he went, no, tap it to me and, and I'll stop it. Like to change the angle of the ball. And then I go, go on, then I'll, I'll just tap it to you. You stop it. The and keeper's he, took a step, hasn't he? That's it. Yeah, he's, he's not read that at all, has he? And then to celebrate with everyone on the bench as well. So even Sully's ran at 40, 50 yards, as you'll see him coming in a minute. Yeah, and, and I've got an unbelievable picture, that um, an iconic picture that I like, you know, with me running off, I think my point in my finger um, that, that always takes me back to to that, you know, my first ever hat-trick in professional football, you know, and to do it like that, the semi-final of a, of a playoff was unbelievable like you say it's the, it's the icing on the cake for me I've still got the ball at home in, a, in, a, in the cabinet it was unbelievable night there it is there that picture <laughs> it was just a huge feel good factor around the club mm. you know at the time we, we just felt as a, as, a, as a player that you were going in the right direction and we knew what we were about nil nil at, at the first leg and then to win 5-1 was was dreams come true Cops there could only be one goal at number one couldn't they maybe not the most spectacular but the one that meant the most in terms of what it brought for the club and for you I'm sure you've, you've been asked hundreds if not thousands of times about it ever since should we take a look at, at the final stages of that game against Brentford in 2013 oh wow what's going through your head there so I couldn't even work out why I'd give it looking back obviously it was a penalty um, you see their manager just say I've never seen that either saying calm down like it's just unreal the emotion that goes through your like your body at that point I can't imagine what was going through Jamie's Jamie's mind so they just uh, 
taking a few time. seconds yeah. Yeah. he told us though didn't he he didn't really have to do much with the way that the players were arguing did you get sense that on the pitch as well I didn't even see it you know I I honestly was just thinking about oh my god another two weeks training um, so close but genuinely thought he was going to score like never once thought that he would miss but as a player if you're in that Brentford team do you want a young player who I think was on loan at the time wasn't he to be taking that and the pressure he's going to him there sorry yeah. he's going to him there Look, saying O'Connor was the experienced head wasn't he in that team I've not really seen that <laughs> what's he doing <laughs> look at the guy there saying yeah. it wouldn't have helped the taker would it at all or anyone else involved he's hit it well though Are you already on your bike at this point? No, not yet. Now I'm on my bike. You can see me. It gives me goosebumps. <laughs> wow. Shirt off. <laughs> Watch this. Don't see anybody and then just go... <laughs> People are falling off. It's unbelievable. It's unreal. Like the... But I just can't remember anything. Players coming up to me, running, like, look at me asking for my shirt back. <laughs> <laughs> like, look, guys. <like>, <laughs> absolutely no chance. As it's rolling through to you here, yeah, is it just get the touch right? Get the touch right? I think it bobbled just in front of me and then bobbled again. And um, yeah, you've, you've, I've just, I know I've got time to settle it and then tap it in and. There's no way I was missing that. <laughs> you can see the bench's reaction. They're all up, aren't they? Ready? I've not seen this before. Look at... Is it after the... I've not seen that with Billy. Yeah, they're all cheering Billy on, aren't they? Look at the keeper. I've not seen this footage. Wow. Unbelievable. It's such a contrast of emotions, isn't it? You've gone from thinking another two weeks in the playoffs, so then within 20, 30 seconds, all of a sudden you're up the celebrations can start you know 46 games a season is absolutely gruelling and to be so close and to be able to tear his promotion I'm thinking he's scored and then you're thinking oh my god now I'm, you sort of you see everybody not wanting to give a penalty away <laughs> imagine if another one had been given that's what I mean <laughs> and then here like I'm sprinting I'm just on my bike mm. and to be fair Billy like you don't give him enough credit really because he could have quite easily Taken gone and gone himself yeah. um, look straight past him see you later <laughs> the one fan over the advertising boarding how would you if, if you were on in Trotter's shoes with a penalty would you have got uh, he went for power I would, have gone would power. you have gone power 100% He's hit it really, really well. Mm. He's probably the biggest Rovers legend to never wear a Rovers <laughs> shirt, isn't he? I mean, you took the, the plaudits at one end, but he's written into Rovers history for missing that penalty. The thing is as well, he's absolutely leathered it. Mm. Like, you see, he's literally took off. Like, both yeah. feet are in the air when he's kicked it. That could be the only goal you pick at number one, isn't it? That that can never be beaten. No, I, don't it I don't think it matters whether you score 50-yard volley, mm. which I had scored um, in pre-season, <laughs> or you, um, or you, you know, the, the sentiment behind it, the magnitude of the goal, what it meant to the fans, what it means to the players and the staff and everybody associated with the club. You know, there'll never be a goal. Well, obviously they won't be because I'm retiring, but... You know, I'd be very surprised if there's ever ever a goal that means that much. You know, Francis Tierney's goal that got the club into into the football league was was as important as that goal, if not more important. You know, them goals are few and far between, and for me to score that goal, there's there's no way that it goes anywhere but number one. Congratulations on a fantastic career. All the best for for whatever the future holds. Cheers, Robbie.